Howdy folks, welcome back to another DIY video here at the Weekend Angler. A few weeks ago I showed you the new Humminbird Helix 7 side imaging fish finder that I'd purchased and received from BBG Marine. And uh, I finally got around to getting the transducer installed on the Minn Kota Power Drive version 2 trolling motor. It was tricky, it was trickier than I thought it was going to be. And I will say this right off the bat, the instructions that Minn Kota includes as to how to mount an external transducer to their power drive, frankly, they suck. Uh, I've looked several different forums. I did a bunch of Google, Google searching and uh, for about as many people as there are asking how to put a transducer on this uh, particular model of trolling motor, there are that many different possible answers. So what I did, I kind of went through and found what I thought was the best of all the, uh, all the methods there. I uh, combined about two or three different methods and uh, I was able to take this out on the boat last week, test it out, and I can say that it is working uh, quite well. So I'd like to share with you what I did on this. So give me a second, I'll get the uh, trolling motor in place and show you what we're doing. Folks, first thing I did was when mounting this transducer was I got me a piece of rubber to go between the trolling motor adapter and the uh, transducer itself. There were a few people online that said that was good to reduce interference caused by the motor vibration. I can't say whether or not uh, it does anything because I, the entire time I've been running this, I just put that piece of rubber underneath there. It was cheap. It was a couple dollars at the uh, hardware store. I cut it down to the size I needed. You've got a uh, stainless steel muffler clamp, radiator clamp, however you want to look at it. And uh, that holds the rest of the transducer to the trolling motor. What I tried to do was get this thing level, uh, both forward to backward and side to side. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job. I took it out, like I said, last week, and I don't believe it needs adjustment. And what I did with the cable afterwards is I drilled two 3 16th inch diameter holes in the upper and lower fins, and I used those holes to pass a zip tie through and secure that transducer cable. Once, uh, once that runs, we'll get this trolling motor put into place. Now you do have to leave quite a bit of slack in this transducer cable to account for the fact that the entire mo uh, motor shaft itself spins. You don't want to have that tied too tightly. Your motor will spin around and you will break that transducer cable. So what I did to keep it out of these pinch points, everywhere in here, is a good way to pinch that wire. I used to have a uh, older Minn Kota power drive, put a transducer on it, and I did run into that. I've ended up having to splice the wire back together for the transducer. So what I did here, I took one of the quarter inch by uh, quarter inch by 20 machine screws out of the side housing. I got a longer one and a couple of stop nuts, and I got one of these rubber coated steel clamps. I got the one that's one inch in diameter and I've got that sitting almost vertically and as you can see my transducer cable just runs through there and that keeps it from getting into any of these pinch points. Guys this leads us to about what I believe is probably the most important part of this entire setup and that's this extension spring right here. When you have enough slack for the transducer cable if without that spring this flops all around and it's going to get itself into trouble. What I did, I saw a video by another YouTube user. I'll put a link to his video in the uh, description of my video here. And I liked what he did. Frankly, I thought it was a, it was a wonderful idea. He picked up a extension spring. I picked mine up at, at the Home Depot. It's a 5 8 inch by 6 and a half inch by 0 .054 inch uh, extension spring. Come in a package with about four of them. And uh, I picked up some 3 8 inch rubber grommets, like for a wire grommet. Now all you need to do is uh, unscrew and take the head off of your trolling motor. And that'll get you access up in here to get some zip ties put through. And I just, as you can see, I just stuck that uh, grommet inside the wire part of the spring, ran a couple zip ties through. Did the same thing at the bottom. I had to use a pair of pliers to flex the spring out of the way a little ways. But once I'd done that, I got the uh, grommet and transducer cable in there with no problems. 
And what this allows for is if you accidentally turn your trolling motor around maybe a little bit too much, it gives it probably about another six inches of slack before you'll uh, run out of cable. Hopefully by then you'll catch what you're doing and uh, stop before you damage your transducer cable. And uh, from there I come up through that. I've zip tied the uh, transducer cable twice to the main control head wiring and I ran the transducer cable down through the wiring all the way back to the base of the unit. And from there it runs over to my fish finder and it's good to go. Well folks that's the way I mounted the transducer on my power drive V2. If you have a better way by all means use it. Uh, like I said I researched this a lot before I ever put the transducer on or even attempted to and this seems to be working really well. I'm hoping that the spring will hold up but uh, you know I know eventually it will start to corrode I'm going to have to replace the spring but you know we can deal with that when the time comes won't be too bad but I spent about 12 hours this past Thursday out on the lake fishing and never really had any trouble at all with this thing. So guys as always thank you for watching my videos like subscribe let me know what you think and uh, you know I haven't gotten a whole lot of videos out here lately it's not because I haven't wanted to it's just I don't want to put videos out for the sake of putting videos out I'd like to have something uh, worthwhile to watch and uh, hopefully this helps you out here if you guys are having trouble getting a transducer mounted on the power drive v2 trolling motor and uh, you know closing thought on this is uh, I don't believe Minn Kota should leave the end user up to coming up with a workable solution to mount an external transducer I think this you know this has been out this this has been a design flaw since they made the original power drive and uh, one would hope that they would have gotten that fixed by now, but they haven't. So, guys, thank you much. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.